Type 2 diabetes occurs when our bodies are no longer able to move adequate amounts of glucose from our bloodstream into the cells of our bodies where it is used to make the energy our bodies need. We get glucose from the sugary and starchy foods that we eat. Insulin is a hormone produced in a gland called the pancreas, which is located near our stomach and liver. The insulin acts like a key to unlock our body cells to allow the glucose to enter into the cells where it's converted into energy. If we're unable to produce enough insulin to move the glucose into the cells, the amount of glucose in our blood increases. This increase of blood glucose can cause permanent damage to some of the organs in our bodies, such as the heart, eyes, brain, blood vessels and nerves, and it can make us very sick. Type 2 diabetes results from a combination of genetic and lifestyle factors. A family history of diabetes means that one or more of your blood relatives has diabetes. You may or may not develop diabetes as a result. The risk of developing diabetes is increased when your lifestyle causes you to be overweight or obese. Your risk is also increased if you don't have sufficient physical activity. If you eat a diet high in fat and high in sugar, and if you're carrying too much weight around your waist. There is no cure for type 2 diabetes. However, it can be managed to reduce the extent of permanent damage to your body. Type 2 diabetes can often be managed by eating plenty of vegetables, by reducing the amount of fat and sugar you eat, and by getting regular physical activity, and through regular monitoring of your blood glucose levels. Over time, most people with type 2 diabetes will need tablets to assist in the management of the disease and many will also need insulin to help lower their blood glucose levels. Taking tablets or insulin as soon as they are required can result in fewer health problems in the future. The aim of diabetes management is to keep blood glucose levels as close to normal as possible. The normal level is between 4 to 6 millimoles per litre before food and up to 7.7 .7 millimoles per litre two hours after a meal. Keeping blood glucose at these levels will help prevent both short-term and long-term health problems. Regular blood glucose monitoring is necessary to see if the treatment being followed is controlling your blood glucose levels properly. You can use an electronic blood glucose meter to monitor your blood glucose levels. The meters are easy to use and the test only takes a few moments to perform. Recording your results will give you a record of your blood glucose levels. These short-term results will assist your health professional team in the advice they give you regarding the management of your diabetes. Testing your own blood glucose levels gives you short-term readings, which will tell you what your blood glucose levels are at that time. In addition, a blood test to measure your HbA1c should be ordered by your doctor every three to six months to check your blood glucose control over the previous three months. A glycated haemoglobin test, the full name of the HbA1c test, measures the amount of glucose that your red blood cells have absorbed during the past six weeks and is measured as a percentage of your total red blood cells, not as millimoles per litre as your home blood glucose meter measures. It is best when this test gives results that are less than 7%. Your doctor will use the results from the HbA1c test to decide on the best course of action to take in managing your diabetes. The type of medicine, amount and dosage that your doctor prescribes must be individually adjusted to a person's blood glucose level and may change from time to time. Make sure that you discuss with your GP or credentialed diabetes educator any concerns that you have regarding managing and monitoring your blood glucose levels.